There's lots of tools in Affinity Designer that are often overlooked or just completely underrated. One of those is the fill tool that you can use to create gradients. So today let's go through just how useful it can be. So gradients in general are just overlooked, but Affinity Designer make it so easy to make gradients that after you've watched this video, you've got no excuse not to use them. All right, so we've got this rectangle here, so let's give it a fill. So on our toolbar on the left here, we've got our fill tool, or you can use the shortcut G to use it. So if we click this, you can see nothing really happens. But if we click and drag from, let's say, the left side to the right side of this rectangle, you can see a gradient forms. Now you might be thinking, yeah, so what? But here we go. Up here, we've got our color. So if we open this just by clicking on it, you can see the colors that we are gradienting, if that's a word, between. So right now we're going from white to gray. We can change these colors. So let's change this white to something like a nice blue. And let's change this gray to a red. We'll just make some really contrasting colors so we can make this obvious. Now what's great with this is we can actually just click anywhere on this line and we can add another point. What's great with this as well is that we can drag how this color is blended by using this little slider. So if we grab this, we can make the blue more apparent and the red not quite and alternatively we can go the other way and make the red more obvious than the blue so we can control that gradient really easily just from that and if you want to you can actually use a percentage amount and move this slider instead but we'll leave it in the middle for now what we can also do is we can add more points to this line by simply clicking so if we click a new point we've got a new one there and what's really cool with this is that now we can change this color as well. So let's change it to like, I don't know, like a pink. Let's add another point. Let's put another one over here somewhere and let's change this to an orange. So now you can see, if we make another point, you can see some really, really interesting gradients can be made out of this. And in between each, we can blend the two colors as little or as much as we want. So maybe we only want a small stripe of yellow and maybe we only want a small stripe of pink. We can do that quite easily just using this slider. But not only that, right now, if you see here, we've got our context. We're currently affecting the fill of this rectangle. We don't have to. Instead, what we can do is if we grab this rectangle, let's give it a stroke. So let's make it quite obvious so you can see what it looks like. So now if we head back into our fill tool now, rather than affecting the fill, we can change this to stroke. So now when we click and drag, you can see that the stroke is now being affected. So we've gone from black down to a gray. So again, we can go into our little color panel here and let's change it to something like white to black. So not only can we affect the fill of this rectangle or any shape that we make, but we can also affect the gradient. And if you don't like it, or if you think, you know what, I don't want white up in this corner, you can redraw it. Let's grab it again. Hmm, doesn't look right. Maybe we'll do it from this angle. You can do this as many times as you like. You can click off the shape click the shape again and redraw it. You can do this as many times as you want until you crash the software, which I reckon you probably won't. So it's highly editable. And we've even got the little slider here that we can change the blend of the gradient. But what if you want to go the other way around? You can even reverse this gradient as well. So we've got a button up here, which if we press reverse, it'll keep it in the exact same orientation, but just swap the colors. So you can see that the black and white literally swap places. All right, let's go even a step further. Let's grab the fill again. And rather than having this as a linear gradient, which is going straight across in lines, if we head over to type, we can change the type down to something like elliptical. So now it's acting as if there is a ellipsis, which you can change the size of. So it actually looks like there are rings. So if we make this gradient a lot smaller, you can actually see what it's doing. So because it's now an elliptical one, we've got the blue on the inside, then the pink around that, then the purple, then the yellow, then the red on the outside. And again, we can edit the gradient to make it look how we want. We've got a few of the different types. You've got radial in here. You've got conical, which I think is like glasses. So like if you've got a picture of a, a drinking glass, I think that's what that one's for. But let's just stick with linear for now. So again, we can redraw this gradient if we don't like the way it was. We can go in and we can re-edit the colors. Say we wanted to get rid of a color. You just grab the point, pull it off, literally pull it off. Let's maybe leave it like that. I mean, that looks pretty good. But what's also great with this is that say we like this gradient. We really like it and we're going to use it on multiple projects. While we've got this selected, if we head over to the swatches tab, we've got up here right now, in the swatches panel, we can save this gradient. So as long as we've got this selected, if we head over to this symbol here with the three squares and the plus icon, it says add current fill to palette. So we've got our rectangle selected. If we click that, we've now got that gradient 
saved right there. So let's say we make a different shape like this circle here. All we have to simply do is click on that color and we've got our gradient there. We open our fill tool and we can re-edit how this gradient looks. What we can also do is selecting this, we can head over and change the stroke to this as well. So if we click the stroke there, we can add a gradient to the stroke. Head over to our fill tool and we can change this to stroke. And now we can edit our stroke as well. All right, and as I love doing with these videos, let's show you a really cool thing that we can do with this fill tool. So let's say we have this rectangle here and let's imagine this is some kind of website. So not only can we add a gradient to this, which we will do. So we're going to go from the bottom corner here all the way up to the top corner. And already it looks so much better than it would do if it was just plain white. But what we can actually do is heading into this color icon here. If we grab this last point, we can actually change the opacity of this as well. So if we bring this down, you can see that you can make a banner that not only changes in color, but also changes in opacity as well. And with this slider, we can make it so the blend is more towards one side compared to the other. So if we only want it to be a opaque right at the very end we can move this slider this way but if we want it to be quite a more dramatic reduction in opacity we can slide it this way so in fact you may even see banners like this online where we can add text on top of a banner like that it can even be used for things like business cards but it's an easy way to achieve an effect which looks really good but trust me gradients are so much better in every scenario even the ones you don't think they are so let's say we had this design right here, just four different size circles. Looks pretty flat, looks pretty boring. Instead, let's add a gradient to it and we'll only make it very subtle. We'll copy that gradient like that, hit Control and C, hit Control, Shift and V to just paste the fill color, Control, Shift and V. You can see that even though it's only a very, very slight gradient, it already adds some value to that to make it look so much better compared to what we had before, which was just some flat colors. So even a slight gradient can have a really big impact on the design that looks kind of boring. But then it all depends. But hopefully I've sold you on gradients and just how easy they are to make on this software. So there you go. Everything you need to know to make some really cool gradients. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more videos like this. If you've not already, make sure you check out this video here for more great tips. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.